This is a test of the Boundary Park Alert System. Live Boundary Park FA Cup. It's sexy day for fans only. And who am I with? What's your name, mate? Samuel Poulter. And what's uh, so special for to you for you today, mate? What are you doing today? Because I'm on the drum. You're on the <laughs> drum. Uh, Oldham's next Ringo star. So FA Cup. We've never beaten Halifax at home or away yet. Is today the day? It is. Norwood two. Norwood two. Don't think he'll have calf strength for after running a marathon then, no? That's if he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's not playing, we'll win, yeah? Well, I'd hope so. If you want to beat Halifax, though, you want to get a good run in the FA Cup. But so you prior, do you think the FA Cup is important, not the league? Would you not just focus oh, no, on the no, league? I'd rather focus on the league. You want to go up, don't you? But so FA. is choice nice third round against Man United at home or going up via the playoffs? What would you have? <laughs> Man United at home. Really? Right, OK. Right, so what's the score going to be today, pal? 2-0. 2-0. I hope you're right. Cheers, pal. Right, Thank you. Too. No worries. Hi, I'm just here. What's your name, pal? Ray Mossop. So, Ray, today, FA Cup magic. First round, qualifying. Do you think we're going to win? Uh, I certainly hope so. We haven't beat Halifax yet. Uh, I know one of our bogey teams. Well... We've got to break the hoodoo sometime. Do you think today will be the day, yeah? Well, I'm, I'm, I think we'll win 4 0. But... Well, that's the second person today who said 4 0, so I might have a bet on that. Um... I wouldn't, because I say it every game. <laughs> <I wouldn't laughs> it so, what, what's. I know we got beat off Solly all last week, yeah. but did you take any positives out of the game? Um, I thought the, the team setup was unbalanced, too one sided. Um, it was a bit like watching England the other night, too many people chasing the same. We weren't that bad. <laughs> we weren't. <laughs> no, no. No, but I think I think he learns he learns and adapts, doesn't he, Madeline, to be fair to him, doesn't he? Yeah, but he doesn't seem to do the adjustment in the game as quick as I'd like him to. Right. But, well maybe you know, he's, yeah, it's hard when you've trained all week and then you've got a you've got a set drill and yeah. then you have to change it. But yeah, you're right, you're quite right. Yeah. So four nil. And then, yeah, positively. Yeah, and do you reckon we're going to get a lovely third round tie this season? Yeah, you Man we United at all? one with a bit of money, yes. Yeah. We'd like that, but just for Franks and his family. So the, so the FA Cup is important to you, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. And what, what, what's important? What, 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 what memories well, of the, the FA Cup? I remember speaking to Joe Royal many years ago when we just first got promoted and I was getting my season ticket and he was there at the office and I said, going to win the league this year? And he said, no, we're not that good. But we've got a good chance of a cup run. Yeah. And that's the way I look at it. A bit of a cup run will be good. Thanks very much, mate. All You're the best. Welcome. Thanks for talking to me. You're welcome, Sexy Dave. Sexy Dave for the fans on here with Mr John Kappa. How are you doing, John? Doing well, thank you. Shouldn't be here today. Should be at the hospital. But they put me appointment off. All right, I hope, I hope you're well and healthy. Yeah, yeah, you're all good, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just an eye appointment. So. OK, so an eye appointment. So let's hope you'll see some lovely <laughs> football today. Uh, Halifax, we've never beat them at home or away yet. Is today the day? Hope so, yeah, I was checking that. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a few draws against them. Uh, went up there, usually go up there to their place when, when it's uh, dry. Well, we've had enough draws this season, haven't we? So less draws, the better. What score is it going to be, mate? Well... I was looking at the scores that they were putting on. Everybody was really positive. I'm going to be positive. I think this could be the day when our attackers do what they've been threatening to do. I, I think we're going to beat them 4 0. 4 0. And who's going to score? Well, they're not who's in the team yet. Yeah, come on, just give us your guess. I, I think the Drummond's going to be playing alongside Norwood, I would think. Uh, give Fond up a bit of a break. Did you like the look of Kurt Drummond when he came on yeah. last week? Loved him. Loved what him, what yeah. did you like about him? He looks to have a little bit of pace and a bit of nouse up front. Yeah, um, he looked he busy, looked, didn't he? He did, he did, yeah. And, uh, you know, he, I think he should be starting, I think. I think Stratton needs a bit of a run out because I've heard good things about him. Yeah, yeah, I saw him uh, in the cup game that we had up against the under 21. And how did he look? He looked okay, yeah. He, he looked as though he needed a couple of games, though, you know, because he's probably not match practised, is he? Well, more games gets more goals, so hopefully you're right, John. Thanks very much for talking to me. Well, thanks, Dave. See you. Hello and welcome to the Boundary Park Alert System. We are quite rudderless this morning because we've got no Andy Halliwell, so I'm left with 
the bumbling buffoon Bradley, who was... Uh, what, what did you just have in your eyes, then? I was just messing about. This fine. Yeah, well, stop it. This is not somewhere that we come to mess about. This is serious. How do you sound like Andy Alliwell? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I've got to take on the role of Andy today. Where is he, anyway? Is he at that... Uh... With the, I think he's uh, at Checkers. The Starmers. The Starmers. Yeah, yeah, he's at, he's at Checkers, I think, yeah. Um, oh, the millionaire elite Illuminati live. I know, I know. How are you, Dave? Good. All good. Good, good. I'm a bit tender this morning. <laughs> uh, apparently, I was sending you pictures at quarter to three in the morning, which I don't remember. Yes, and they will be posted up on the We Are Older Web website. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were relatively okay. It's just the video that was bad. All oh, right, oh dear. Um, so we've got to try and remember how to do things without Andy in proper <laughs> order. <clears throat> so we have a fan guest, and we'll, uh, as is the custom, before we introduce who introduce who they are, we have to ask them a series of questions. Can you remember what they are, Dave? Uh, what was your first game? Oh, uh. It was Chesterfield in the what was the Johnson's Paint Trophy? I think it was the area final. We lost one nil. Oh yeah. Oh, Mavoto. Yeah. That... Up at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Lister. Yeah. yeah. What year? Back, so. What year would that have been then? Oh, fucking hell. Uh, 2011. Yeah. I think. All right. So you're one of the uh, you're one of the younger uh, fan guests we've had on by. Uh, Often the, the games are in the 80s or 90s, our first games. So that gives you a clue, <laughs> listeners, a clue. Uh, what's what the next question, fav- Dave? What's your favourite memory? Um, oh, that's a great question. It's latics related, not just general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way. <laughs> Probably in the FA Cup. Probably Fulham. In, uh, Liverpool. Liverpool, okay. I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, we've not really had a bigger moment than that in recent times, have we? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't say so. No. And finally, who's your favourite player? At the minute, I'd say Ogle. Whatever. Yeah. Who's your favourite player ever? ever? Probably Peter Clark, I'd have to say. Ooh. Mm, fair enough. That's not quite all the uh, questions there. That's all the latex related questions. But do you have a little a fact that is not well known about yourself that you could reveal to us? Like if you test me. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So asking him quite difficult questions when he got in at five in the morning. I know. I'm trying to compute that one. Uh... <laughs> Interesting facts. Um, I, well, when I was about 14, I designed one of the logos that Oldham Ruffyheads currently use. Oh, nice one. Which one? Um, so their junior supporters club. Uh, that one. I designed that, and it was a thing at school, and won that, and then I've got all the stuff that it's on now. It's, that was a couple of years ago now. Oh, that's a good one. You, you you recovered well there. Pulled a good fact out. That's good. Oh, nice that's one. I, I, I think of something there when you said I got in at five. I thought I've got to pull something out of the bag here. Yeah, yeah. No, you did did good. So, welcome to the podcast, Bailey Howell. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Right. Nice see, it's nice to see that you prepped by getting in at 5 a.m. rather than 6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Discipline. It's all about discipline. Uh, so I don't know what time I got in this this morning. It was it wasn't five, and I, but if I text Dave at quarter to three, I was obviously still up at quarter. I, was, I think I was home by then. But um, and this is why, Dave, it's hard work, like doing the podcast and going out. I think so. I don't go out anymore. Like I mean, I don't go out anymore just because I've got to do this on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't even know why we do it on a Sunday. We don't have to do it on a Sunday morning, really, technically. But it tends to be Halliwell who organises it. And you know, he's already been for an eight mile run, uh, usually by this stage, and you know, all that. Well, when you've got butlers, it's everything's done for <laughs> everything's you. Everything's easier, right, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I know that's it, that's the thing. Uh, right, should we talk about the match that uh, happened at Boundary Park yesterday? It'd be an idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> start, wouldn't it? It would be a good place to start. Bailey, did your um, 
you went you obviously went out did it start after the match yeah was it, it did, yeah, yeah? Uh, it was more of a continuation of friday night to be honest but um right yeah, okay well tell us if you remember anything about the game <laughs> what you remember about it <laughs> surprising i remember quite a lot of it i think we just went we went quite flat second half because i think we knew there was very little chance Halifax were getting back into the game because they were shocking yesterday. I thought they were really poor. And I don't even think it's a case of us being exceptional yesterday because I don't think we were unbelievable. But we took our chances when we got them with some helping hand from their goalkeeper. So I think we, we knew, you know, the foot was off the gas in the second half. Really. We could have had three, four more in the second half. We'd have really gone for it. It was one of those very strange occasions where the game was genuinely over at half time. <laughs> it doesn't happen oh, yeah. very often, well, does it? But I mean, like you said, I don't think Halifax actually had enough in them yesterday to to really threaten us in the second half. I think everybody knew that it was a, a case of it being a game over, and it's it's really hard. I think there's uh, there's a mentality shift as well, like when you when you're so comfortable in the scoreline like that and it's always going to be that the, the opposition are going to be working harder to try and get back into the game and they just didn't have it in them, did they, yesterday, Halifax? So it was it was game over at our time. But that first half, decent, um, decent performance. Like you said, we took our chances and we were gifted some chances as well, weren't we? We did, yeah. By, uh, by Halifax. So their keeper had a bit of a nightmare, didn't he? I don't think he could, they could deal with Drummond up front at all. It just it threw them all off. Yeah, it he, he, he was. A, it looked like a good partnership, didn't it, Dave? Yesterday, uh, Fond up and Drummond in that first half with with Lundstrom in behind as well. I think that was that was really key to the success in the first half. Yeah, I think the as Bailey just said it's a, it was a game of two halves, weren't it? But the first the, the first half, Drummond was unplayable. But he, he his pace running into the channels and his movement just caused all sorts of problems with and the, the one two. The one-two bits of passage play where Lundstrom sort of um, played it into the channel to Kitchen, who then passed it back, and then they crossed it for, for that first goal. Was mm. came out of nowhere, didn't it? It was it was like we often puff for a bit. Yeah. Midfield was struggling, and then we just started just doing those like just one-touch moves, and then the the second goal was 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 pretty similar as well. You know, it, you know, two 0 up, and everyone's like, "Hang on a minute!" You know, we we always mourn that we score one goal and then sort of chill out, but with Two 0 up, and it we were sort of sitting back. Um, and then the, th- the third goal, Fondop was brave, wasn't he? With the keeper, I don't even think he fouled him. Usually, you'd think the referee might give something because the keeper just got tackled in fairness. He didn't go down. If he'd have gone down, morning, he would have uh, he would have got the free kick. I think with that referee yesterday, and then the Will Sutton wonder goal for the fourth <laughs> was uh, was superb, weren't it? You know. Um, I spoke to him after the game, Sutton, as well, so we'll hear that we'll hear that later. Will the Wasp Sutton, you were everywhere today, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I was a bit, yeah. Yeah, and coming up against Billy Waters, it's a tough test, isn't it? Because he's, yeah, he's always on the move, yeah. Yeah, yeah so was it was that a difficult you know, so coming into the squad? I know you played in the yeah. National League Cup, but yeah. like so up against someone like Billy Waters who you kept at bay pretty yeah. much most of the game. Was it was that a tough test? No, it was, yeah, but um <clears throat> Look at the two centre halves I was playing with, and the lads around me, like in Raglan and and Moth, we we communicated really well, and it's always good to come back into the team and play alongside players of that calibre because you just it's just sort of an easy fit back in, and they they help you out really well. So, but no, yeah, it was uh, it was always on the move that striker, and uh, had to have my wits about me, but. Um, no, I I thrive for those and live for those challenges. That's why I'm in the game. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's was a big part of why I enjoyed today. You, you, uh, you, as you say, you just mentioned Charlie Racklin and Manny Monk. What, what do them sort of lads do? Do you know the experience they have? Do yeah. they put their arm around you, or are they quite tough on you in training? Do you know? Do you know when you like sort of out yeah. the squad? Do they encourage you? To, uh, yeah, to build a, confidence? a lot. But like for example, with Rags, I played with him all last year as well, and he knows um, what type of player I am and sort of what I can do. So um, he wasn't at all not worried but concerned about how I'd do today um, and I'm, I'd like to think he enjoyed playing alongside me again so you know, we, have a, we have a good relationship and as you say off the pitch um, yeah he, he recognises when he, they need to maybe have a word with me or whatever but a lot of the time it's just encouragement and um, just positive, positivity generally 
you mentioned it, Regan Orgel as well. Yeah. Like, do you know when you were trying to go forward to score that yeah. superb goal and trying to get your goal bonus <laughs> yeah, in yeah. there? So don't worry about it. But when does he, when him dropping in, does that give you that bit more, you know, a bit more confidence to go forward when you want to? Because last yeah. season you had that sort of wing back role, didn't you? So yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it's just sort of getting that relationship and recognizing um, if he's seen me make burst into a space then. Obviously, he knows what his role is, and vice versa. When he's going forward, I know what my role is. So um, it worked out well. Um, I don't think I can claim the goal. No, oh, come on, come on, um, come on. No, it was. Uh, yeah, it worked. It was out on well. target from where I was stood. Anyway, <laughs> oh, I don't know where you were stood. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, and it worked out well, and um, managed to venture forward another time in the second half, which was unfortunate not to get a goal from. But um, no, I do definitely like to try and do that when I can, it shows a different side to my game. Um, but no, yeah, it was just, just that relationship with the players around me, recognising when I can do that type of thing. Well, Will, as the fans say, you're one of our own, mate, and man of the match performance, well done. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I think three changes, Drummond, Gardner coming in and Sutton, I think I think we did all, I think we did okay, but I, I was just concerned when we went was it 3 0 up and then they scored straight away? That goal from Halifax was way too easy. Yeah. Where they, where they went down the left and took on Orgo and just 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 ran at us, didn't they? We, we didn't know what he, to do. Yeah, he ran straight through the, the defence. He, he did well though, there, 22, to be fair, with the ball. Like, uh, he was a good yeah, one. I can't remember his name, but I suppose some Halifax fans who were in the Joe Ralston and they called him Andrew because they can't pronounce his name. <laughs> right. yeah, so he's known as Andrew, but yeah, they said like he's, he's, he cut his fits and starts, but yeah. he was coming into the game a lot, but uh, just the midfield was, it was just a, from where I was sat at the Joe Ralston, the, the gap between the yeah. defence. And the strikers was was of concern, um, and I think that you know on another day that could have been exposed. But you know, Lundstrom was again outstanding. That was really games. good. Just today, you yeah. know, he had a bit of a slight hamstring tweak. That's why he came off. They were just resting him, right? But, but the man of the match, the man of the match for me, I thought you know Sutton was superb. But I thought Cairn Drummond got it for me because he was outstanding. It's just exactly what you need. That energy running behind the lines, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Are you impressed by him then, uh, Bailey? You think that's a good signing? I think he's he offers us a lot different to what we already had, and I think we needed that because we were you know winning games one nil and one one all games where we, we should have had a little bit extra to win and I think he might give us that now going forward where if we're in need of a spark from nothing he's got the pace to shock defences and I think that would be massive for us if we want to go up this year is having a range of strikers where you have Chesterfield had three or four options where they were changing it constantly once the defence is adjusted to one there's another one going round and I think Drummond will be massive for us this year He's 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 also got a good brain, hasn't he? By the looks of it, his movement's good, isn't it? He's not just like running around like a headless chicken. Because sometimes you get quick players who are who are quick, and you know that's about it, really. He's he's got he has some great touches. He's some you know really good runs that are you know decoy runs and all that kind of thing. He's uh he's a good footballer. So yeah, it looks like a good signing. And almost like having a new signing was Will Sutton, wasn't it? Having him back yesterday because uh, he's not played for ages, but he played really, really well. I thought. I think he uh, he has something a bit different about him, doesn't he? Because he can that season he spent at wing back and right back. He, it's given him confidence, I think, to to get on the ball and it and and run forward with it. And he and he and he posed more of an attacking threat than uh, than Hobson would in that position. Hobson's just you know pretty much an out and out defender. Um, so it, it definitely was. It looked, the team looked a bit different with with him in it. So that was positive. Hopefully Lundstrom's all right though, because I think he's uh, come on in leaps and bounds, hasn't he, this season compared to last season? And I think he definitely is suited to that forward, more forward position. He, he suits that that role in behind the strikers rather than rather than holding. Yeah, I think um, with with Lundstrom again, he's growing into that attacking role, isn't he? But I think, as you say, going back to Will Sutton bombing forward, he he wouldn't have got the uh, fourth goal, would we? If he hadn't bombed forward and you know put that cross in because it was a dangerous cross, but he put a few in in the first half. Um, but he's he's positioning, he, you know, he he's not played for ages. He's played against Stoke under twenty 
ones in the in the National League Cup. Um, and coming up against Billy Waters, who was on loan at Wrexham last season, who's a tried and tested striker at National League level. He scored for Barrow. You know, he scored a lot of goals. It was a tough, tough ask that yesterday, and he, he came out of it number one. He, he won every he won every header, he won every tackle. Um, I think he links up well with Ogle when Ogle when he goes forward, Ogle drops back into that centre half role. So it's a good balance where, as you say, Hobson's distribution isn't as good. I think Will Sutton is a better passer of the ball and distributes it better. And to be fair, it must be must be quite rewarding for him considering he's had that long out. You know what I mean? Everyone, everyone said that you know he's, he, and it's not due to injury. He's just had to be patient. Take his, take his opportunity when he's when he was asked, and it's, it can be difficult to do that as a player of that age. But he, he thrived upon it. You know, Mickey Mellon said he was man of the match as well yesterday. Mickey Boundary Park Alert System. Tram me away next round. Fancy it? I'll, I'll be ticking anybody. We're, we're not bored. We everywhere will be a challenge, um, but certainly one that we believe we're ready for. Uh, it'd be it'd be great to to get a football league club and go and see where we're up to. Now we, we, uh, we'll go to that first round proper. It's, um, it gets into a kind of exciting stage then because you can see the size of the prize, eyes on the prize and all that kind of thing. So pleased about that. Um, so we'll see what happens on Monday, but in between them we've got loads of league games um, uh, coming up, a lot of travelling. But uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll see who we get on Monday, but we're, we're, we're happy to, to get anybody. You mentioned earlier about the, the Kane Drummond performance. If if you were playing against him back in the day, would you give him a few kicks? Because he was unplayable. You can't catch start. him. You can't catch him. He's uh, he's it's his enthusiasm for the game. You can, you just look at him and you you go, "There's a guy who's enjoying being a footballer. There's a guy that's going to grab every ounce of every moment on a football pitch. He plays with such a big smile on his face. His enthusiasm is infectious." Um, he just kind of ran out of steam at the end because he's not played enough football. Uh, but you can see the reasons why we worked so hard to try and get him here. And uh, another one, Josh Kerr coming into the side. How pleased yeah. are you to see him back? Really pleased and he ran out of steam. It was probably too much for him, 45 minutes to be honest, but he gave it a right blast and it'll be good for him, for his fitness levels, because he's a good player. He's a good player. We, we, we're really excited about him and, and delighted to have him here. But he'll uh, he'll get fitter and he'll he'll have more of an impact as well. Well done today. On Thank to you. the next round. Thank yeah, you. Carry on. All right, guys. Was that pretty much our best team? Do you think that started yesterday? Then uh, at the minute, no, on, on form and not stuff. Gardner, not Gardner. I thought Gardner had a poor game. I didn't think he was good at all. He was he was trying to be too fancy with it, too messing around with it too much. I would have put you know I would have put Charlesley or. Uh, probably care when he's back fit because I thought care did look good, but he ran out of gas. In he's he's not played that many Been minutes out for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, but I think care is more more suitable for that role. Thank God, I oh, his can didn't play because I don't think he deserved to after that performance last last week. He was he was a woeful. Uh, but we have we've got enough depth now in the midfield just to to mix it up a bit because even Char, even Charlesley as well, you could drop Lundstrom in that mid, centre midfield role, which is probably not his best position, and put Charlesley up front, but. You know, it, there's, there's quite uh, quite a richer richer spoils there. That we can um, we can we can use. Do you like do you like that formation? Do you think uh, Bailey? Do you think that's the best um, sort of way of playing that we've that we've got the most effective way of playing that we've got at the minute? I think so. I think you know, looking at the way we have been playing, sort of the end of last year, where we were sort of shoehorning people in, trying to almost compensate for other players I think that formation yesterday worked really well especially when we're trying to kill teams off and you know trying to overload them I think that that can definitely benefit us playing that way rather than obviously when we used to smash the ball over the top and hope for the best almost and I think Lundstrom in that more advanced role as well is the Lundstrom that we signed not the one we've been getting where we've been sort of playing him a bit further back like last year when he was holding people's hand in midfield because he couldn't pass four yards and he's got to try and almost do their work for him because we didn't have a good enough midfield last year and even with the role of Conlon as well I think him compared to last year is like night and day he's a different player now and he offers us a lot where he's just getting his foot on the ball we can now dictate the play at home where last year people were running all over us and 
team were coming here and sort of having it all their way. And now I, I think it's very difficult difficult for them to come to Boundary Park and do that now. Yeah, no, that that's definitely true. I think like yesterday in the first half that uh, Halifax. Like before, sort of like before the goal rush, really, it you know, it was a bit back and forth, wasn't it? Halifax had periods where they had the ball, and then, but like you said, we we were able to take control and and say, like, hang on a minute, this is this is we're at all, this is our game, we're gonna we're gonna start knocking the ball about a bit and and, and changing the game. And we didn't have that last season, was just and there's not not just last season, but for a number of seasons, it's been a case of like just giving the ball back to the other team all the time, like constantly having to defend because when we get the ball, we don't know what to do with it. And thankfully, that's changed now. And I think what's good at the minute is what what's optimistic, gives me optimism about this team, is I think I still think you mentioned Conlon. I, th- I still think there's more to come from Conlon. 100%. I still don't think he's playing his um, his best football at the minute. I, I mean, I haven't seen him, but I I, I hope that there's a lot, still a little bit more to come from him. Um, you, you're, pulling, you're grimacing, Dave. No, I, I, I didn't rate his performance at all yesterday. I thought he was, I thought he was very negative. I thought he was always trying to look to go backwards or go to the side. He needs to play the ball forward in or go out wide forward because he always seems to just pass it back for someone else to start the play. And if you're the central midfielder who's meant to be commanding and dictating play, he should be. I think it was very imbalanced with Gardner and Conlon in the middle because they're both trying to do the same thing. And I think Gardner, yeah, I think we know. need those two holding midfielders though. With oh the, yeah, I do. With that, I with the three, two creative, the two creative players, and I think Gardner was trying to play the, the million pound ball sometimes rather than playing the yeah. simple ball. Yeah. They just don't play the simple forward pass. They, 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 they tend to go backwards for someone else to start. And I, I don't know if that's the system that that Melbourne's trying to play because ultimately it was like the Som in the middle of the park yesterday. It was it was no man's land. We had no midfielders near the centre circle around the around the centre of the pitch. They're either too far forward or they were t- Conlon was too deep. So that in the middle for a tuck, there's no one in the middle actually trying to win the ball back. You know, I, I know I'm a fanboy of Nathan Sheeran, but he used to get the <laughs> ball back and and get it back. I'm not saying for one minute that Sheeran should be should be brought back or anything, but we haven't got that tough tackling midfielder. We haven't got <laughs> someone who's going to battle to get it back because Conlon is very, very half-hearted when he goes for that tackle. He, he'll try and then sort of stick his leg out and then let him go past him. And I think Sutton was trying to was picking up a lot of those sort of midfield balls yesterday because he was being put, pushing forward and, and Orgo was dropping in. You know what I mean? But then when it went wide, we were exposed down the side, and that's why we that's why we conceded the first goal because Sutton went in for the for the midfield ball that one of the midfielders should have got because Gardner can't tackle because he, he can't run, can he? he? He he's he's not got the pace. So, Bailey, think, do you agree with Dave's assessment of the midfield there? I think sometimes we um we do abandon the midfield and we are getting away with it at the minute, but. Playing against the better side, like if we, when we come up against Barnet or even it paid me to say at Rochdale, we we go to spot them. We know with the midfield like that, we get run all over. We'll lose four 0 Agreed. We've got to be very careful because we have been getting away with it. And like Dave said, Conlon, when he tack- when he goes to tackle someone, there's two outcomes: he either get past him or he fouls him. He never gets the ball back. And mm. even that, like you were saying about Gardner, who you know possibly shouldn't have resigned because he's always injured. So who's who? Who should I mean? Conlon's the captain, so we can assume that he's going to take one of those places. Yep. We'd like to see Lundstrom further forward. Yeah. So who who plays alongside Conlon? What what? Who's your choice? Uh, really? what, who do you go for? Well, this is the problem. Really, you've got like well, we haven't got that tough tackle midfielder. I do like the look of Harry Charles, but whether I want to limit him by playing him that far back, I don't know. I think maybe you have to play Gardner and Conlon at the minute because we haven't got got anyone else that's going to do it because well, is not what in my opinion what everyone says he is and especially absolutely and like last week cam was absolutely shocking he got away with it by scoring but other than that i thought like he might as well not been playing he's a passenger he's a passenger yeah and uh, when care came on he got he got a, he got a like an elbow to the face when he got that tackle didn't he in the second half he, he got he made that fantastic tackle but then got elbowed but I think that's that's the player who we're going to put in that position just to yeah. try and 
win the ball back. But he, he does he does look good because he dropped he made it a four three three for the last fifteen minutes where K it was Fondop K and Drummond and then they took they t- who did they sub for um for Jez? I think they took Gardner off and then he put Jez like in a central role, which yeah. baffled me. What was that about? Like and Jez were on it on it on it yesterday. Like, why don't you give Stretton a run out? I think Stretton's one of those players who can run behind the lines as well. From speaking to the Stockport Stockport contingent who we know. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That he is a he is a decent player, but he needs to have a bit of a run out. I thought Fondot was tired for the last 10 minutes. So it, it was very bizarre the system he played in the last 10 minutes where Jez was central. Fondot was like sort of on the well, sorry, Fond up and then Norwood came on towards the, the right hand side, and then sort of care was sort of in that area as well. It was it was really bizarre and it didn't work at all. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm not I'm I'm you know I'm not gonna get on I'm not gonna get on players' backs and I'm I don't want to be overly critical of particular players, but I think Jez needs to sort of you know the the, the, the I think there's a lot of coaching needs to be done with him because he seems to be Quite indecisive. He doesn't. He is. His, his decision making and his instincts just don't seem right to me. He doesn't seem to know what to do minds, with the ball. He? Yeah, he's always in two minds. Am I going to tr- take him on? Am I going to pass it? Am I going to cross it? Giving it away. Whether it's just a confidence thing, I'm not. I don't know. But like, I think you know when he when he comes onto the pitch, he's not he's not impacting the game uh, enough. Um, and. I don't think, from what I gather from Mickey Mellon, that he's going to get too many opportunities if he does that. And I think that's the same with Khan. You know, he's he, he's been in the squad now; he's out of the squad. Um, I'm not convinced that's his best position anyway. I'm not sure what his best position is, but I don't think it's that number ten role. But you, I think you've got to come into this squad now. There are options in in certain positions, especially and if you don't come in and and make an impact. You're not going to get a game, and if you don't get games, then you you, you know you, you obviously you you get out of the flow of it, and you lose confidence, and it's even more difficult to get back in. But um, so what? What? Who would you put K in next to Conlon? Then Dave, is that what you're saying, or do you think he's better? I, I'd give it a go. Or, it, yeah. he did, I think he, he did well against File when he did that. Um, he, he's got a lot of energy. Well, he's got he like that's his game, and he does he runs around a lot, <laughs> like he's yeah. and he gets tackles, he gets stuck in, and he wants to be on the ball. So I think he. he what about Hammond? Is he is he an option in there? Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I actually forgot about him, but you know, what I mean? he, he's not been anywhere, has he? Is it was he on the twenty one duty again? Yeah, he's always he with Wales, and he? he he's he's he he needs some. Uh, he needs a good run of games now because he's. I, I like him a lot. I think he's a good player and um, he's, he's got the energy. Um, and if you need to just tighten up that midfield, he does. He does seem to do a good job. Um, you know, the, I think the last game he played was walk. Was it walking away where he where he was um, where he was where he was flat, he flying? Oh no, or was it Forest Green? He played Forest Green, didn't he? As well, straight after the walking game, he played. Yeah, he was. Played he, was a, he definitely played walking game. Yeah, but I don't remember Forest Green, but. Yeah, I'm sure he played it. Yeah, so I think we yeah. started the same team. Didn't we? Not an embarrassment. Yeah. Rich is in that midfield. You know, Khan's not Khan's not a bad player, but he needs to get involved in the games more. And you know, obviously the Grims, Grimsby Yorble fans have raved about him, saying he was a good player. Um, it's just what is his position? We've got Dolan as well. Yeah, Hammond, Charlesley, uh, Gardner, Conlon, Jez. So we we have got. We have got a massive midfield options to, to, to pick from. Um, but if it was for me, I'd be picking, you know, for our, our, our performances and best four, you know, Conlon, although he, he has been he has been ever present, I'd probably play Hammond, um Charlesley, uh, uh, Lundstrom. They're, they're, that's your midfield for me. Yeah. Uh, but it's gonna be imbalanced, I think. Well, that's Mickey Mellon's job in it now to <clears throat> to work out what the, what the best midfield is, and it will change. Uh, I just told you that's what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, if you're listening, sort it out, mate. Mm, I don't think that will be the midfield, though. I don't think no. that for one second that those three will be played together, Dave. Can I just give a big, big shout out to Matt uh, Matt Matt Kitchen as well? Because I think he's been last eight games, he's been far and far and away. You know, everyone goes on about Monte and Raglan, but I think Kitchen has turned a corner because last season he looked very unconfident, didn't he? Yeah. And looked a bit mentally tired. But he looks, he looks like a new player this season, doesn't he? Yeah. 
kicked him up the arse, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. last, last year, you know, he knew if he wasn't injured, he was going to start. Mm. And now it's he, he had no reason to be sort of performing other than that he knew he was playing. Now it's if he if he's not performing, he doesn't play because we've got, yeah, got Priest, haven't you? You know, so yeah, it's good. It's good. We've yeah. got we've got de- a little bit of depth um, all over the place, really. What yeah. about your mate? What about your mate? Yesterday, Dave making what, his ha- debut debut hero? at Wheelstone. Yeah. Well, you can only score. I know it was Gosport Town, but you can only score against what's in front of you. And he's played two, scored four. You know, scored for Latix in the uh, National League Cup, and then scored three. You know, what what can you say? Attricks and Attrick FA Cup. It's and they were they were meant to be good goals as well. One was a penalty, you know, but it was a good penalty. So, yeah, I I, I really think, you know. There's still a place for it, Oldham, but you know, not not while Mellon's there. <laughs> uh, I somehow think that Mickey Mellon is going to outlive Alex Reid at Latix, and that's going to answer that one mm. somehow. But yeah, fair play to him. I think you know he deserves credit for going away on lo- out on loan and scoring an hat trick on his debut. You can't uh, you can't do, do more than, than that. that you can't do much more than that, can you? It's a uh, it's a uh, fair enough. He scored more goals than Joe Nuttall, Willoughby. So you know, I mean, that's in one game. You know, while they've been on loan. So <laughs> yeah. it just goes without saying, doesn't it? It's a bad decision. I think. Well, I don't. We, Bailey, would you rather have Drummond up front or Alex Reid? I mean, I've I've not seen enough of Drummond to say definitely Drummond because we've got about play a lot, two three games out of him. Reed recently, honestly, I haven't. We've not seen enough of either of them, but you know, I think for what he offered us yesterday, I would probably take Drummond at the minute. But then it's if Reed's doing, you know, starts doing well at Wheelstone, I think we can probably look at trying to get him back. Of real, you know, whether Mellon's got, you know, gonna do that and sort of compromise what's already gone on because I know he's, he's obviously not a fan of the stuff and what have you and what he posts. So it's whether whether Reed is gonna stop doing that or whether Mellon's gonna have the I can't think of the word, but you know, of the where he will bring him in, just swallow his pride almost and let him play. But I don't think that's gonna happen personally. I think if well, he the, was going to get a run in the squad, he would be he would be would have been getting it while um, Norwood's been out injured, while Garner's been out injured, you know, while they're bringing in players on loan. He obviously Mellon obviously doesn't think that he either thinks that he doesn't offer what he wants for the team, or he just doesn't like him and he doesn't want to play him, and it's as simple as that. So I think it's I think this loan move is more about him getting the you know getting. The first step of it to him to him moving on to somewhere new. I think that's that's probably going to be the case. So, what did everyone think of Norwood yesterday? Well, he didn't really have much time when he came on, did he? He didn't really get to do much, did he? Do you think that's Melon still proving a point from last week? Yeah, I think I think with Norwood, it's I'm going to when this goes out, people are going to disagree with what I say, but. I think there's a lot of people who are buzzing when James Norwood makes a mistake, and it's it's so embarrassing to read on Twitter. Like we'll win a game, but Norwood's put a pass out of play, and everyone's like, oh, like giving it, and like Fondop didn't do this, and I'm like, at the same time, though, I do understand a lot of James Norwood's frustrations. Don't get me wrong, like I do understand why people can think he's lazy, or he doesn't care, but for years on years on years, people wanted a striker who was arrogant, wanted to just put the ball in the net. And then we got him and everyone's like, don't like him, he's selfish, he does this, he does that. But then, saying he doesn't like playing for us, I wouldn't like playing for us sometimes because last year when he was scoring the goals every week, people were still complaining about him, saying he doesn't celebrate. And I think, I think in any other line of work, if if you were doing your job and people were going, yeah, but you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you'd be like, well, what's the point? Now, now it's I think he has been very lazy recently. I think he has not been doing it at all recently. But I think it's there's there's part of me that does understand it because sometimes he'll make a really intelligent run or he'll play an intelligent pass and then he's not getting it back because the quality's not around him and or Ebbsfleet where 
can't run through Shrewsbury Square in it for a tap in or lunch we should be knocking it through for a one on one. He isn't getting that, and I can understand his frustrations, but I think it needs to be more team centered. But do you think he? Do you think him balling out a player and smashing his and having a paddy in the middle of the pitch is acceptable? I, uh, I don't think. I don't think it is because these lads are young lads. They're not. They've not played at his level. They haven't no. played at his level, and he's been championship. You know what I mean? You know, and League One. He should be helping and bringing these players around. And the only one he seemed to have respect for was probably Josh John St- uh, Josh Stones when he came into Latics and Wigan because he played at that higher level. Now, I wouldn't he's, say he's, di- he's digging he's digging players out in the on the pitch, and you know I appreciate it's frustrating, but you don't see Fondop doing that, and you don't see you didn't see you know Drummond doing that, and you don't you don't see Gar- Garner has been at a higher level. He's played in the SPL. And he doesn't dig the players out. He, he he encourages them and says, "Come on, come on, come on!" You know, if it's a bad pass, he'll 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 just he'll give it the old "Well done, never mind, thumbs up." But Font, but but Norwood, his his attitude stinks. It stinks, doesn't it? Just to counter your point about him digging people out, one of the worst people ever for that was John Sherrod, and people love him. Some of the things that man used to say on the sideline and when he was playing, obviously, I've heard the stories. You know, it's the exact same thing, but obviously Sheridan's a club legend and I think sometimes, I've, I've, honestly, if you listen to his Under the Cosh, you've, you've heard what, what, is, what things have been said. And I, don't, yeah, I, don't... I never, I, I, I saw him on the pitch but give a player a bottle, you know, come on, come on, do you know what I mean? Or whatever, but he, he wouldn't be slapping his thighs and going ape, going ape shit the way Norman no, does. I agree I with that. He, I don't think he does that. And that is just brattish behaviour from a self-centred, Ego maniac, and it, it's all about him. And don't get me wrong, if you if you say what you see, goals, say what you see, right? No, but if he scores, if he scores goals and scores in open play, like the last goal he scored was a tapping at Altrincham. What? When was his last goal in open play? Boxing Day against that Hartlepool. It's not, you know, if he was banging ten that like 30, 25, 30 a season, he's only scored penalties. Do you know what I mean? At the start under us, it was all about him. So he was he was banging him, but. He's not. He's not doing it. So Fondop's showing more endeavour. And don't get me wrong, he's a, he's an absolute lunatic when he's running around. But God, he's giving everything for the team, and Garner gives everything for the team. But Norwood has to become a team player because I think I think Mellon's getting very fed up with him from what, from the body language you can see. And you can see Mellon yesterday when he was started. I saw it. He was he banged his side, tapping his sides and stamping his feet and. Huffing and puffing, and Melon just turned around and shook his head at Brabin. You know what I mean? And if the manager's seeing it, it's yeah. not good for the team. If you're one all and you want to get a winning goal, and he's stomping his feet like he did against Ebsfleet when Josh Lundstrom played a poor pass, people play poor passes. You know what I mean? They do, it's, yeah. That, they do. Not... And Lundstrom had run his bollocks off against Ebsfleet and he was running, running himself into the ground. Norwood comes on and starts banging his feet and going, Oh, I'm going mad. And he does go mad, yeah. And Khan had every right to have that shot against Ebsfleet. He's a number 10. You know what I mean? If he'd have scored, it would have been a different story. And quite rightly yeah. so. It could have... But if he's not squaring it to him, probably because they think, I'm not passing to that fucking prick. He's always fucking moaning. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what, it's what happens. It's, 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 the, it's the competitive nature of sport. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. People like Ronaldo and Messi, you know, Ronaldo can do it, can't he? Because he is the best in the world. Norwood isn't, isn't, isn't leading by example. You've got to lead by example. And I'm not having to... I'm only seeing what I'm only seeing what other fans see, and you know when he, when he does make a mistake and loses the ball and doesn't track back, they're going to get on his back, and quite rightly so. Yeah, I think when the, the, well, the one thing I disagree with what you were talking about is the penalty thing. Everyone loves to say this about oh he's only scoring penalties, but the year we got relegated, I, th- I don't think we scored a single penalty we had that year, and I know it's obviously it's, <laughs> yeah. it could be scoring from twelve yards. I'm not saying you know it, he's the best in the world for it, but at the same time. You have to, we've got, you've got to score. Like, I think that year we got relegated, like I'm saying, is I think Keeler Dunn took nearly, I think we scored one and the, the keeper saved it and it went in off his hand. That's Salford, yeah. weren't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And but every other penalty we got, we missed. Like, we got one at Forest Green about three weeks before and missed Lou put it into Gloucester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I remember that. Sam Hart missed against Port Vale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. It, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, just, just to, just to, a, a nice little sort of segue into what's happening on Wednesday, Dave. But when, the thing is with James Norwood, when he steps up to take a penalty, like Wednesday's 40 guest, Andy Little, 
you knew you know it's going in. You know they're going to yeah. score it. Like you know that there's that is just the mental <laughs> side of the the composure, the technique. It's going in. So yeah, you're right. I mean, it's good to have a great penalty taker in in the side, but they have to be contributing. It's not the for ninety then. minutes as well, and, and you know you have to get penalties. And I think you know I mentioned uh, Jez before, and, and you know he's still a young lad, and he, he's someone that you can work with, that you can coach, hopefully, and get more out of him. With Norwood, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to coach anything new into him now at, at, at his age. Uh, although he will have to start to adapt his game because he's not as young and fast and, and fit as he used to be, and all that kind of thing. But you, yeah, the attitude is is is, is basically got to be spot on from him, and uh, he's got to start. He's got. You, you can only start, you know, shouting and raving and and all that at other players if you're delivering. And and his 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 role is his number nine is to be delivering goals, and like you said, Dave, he's he's not he's just not got any. Has he? All right, I'm going to I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit in terms of his performances because he, he missed pre season and and all that, and he's still I don't think he's still fully back. And yesterday when he came on, you know he seemed to be going in with the defenders trying to win the ball and getting stuck in a bit. So. You know, but there, we need we need more from him. If we're going to get promoted yeah. this season, we need him to be scoring twenty goals plus yeah. from this point onwards. And the celebrating thing, I'm not bothered. If you don't want to celebrate, don't celebrate. It, yeah, I'm yeah. not bothered about that. But you have to score first. Yeah. So concentrate on that bit instead of picking <laughs> your own players out and do that. You know what I mean? Because as I say, Garner, he's played at a higher level, and he's he's got a record at a higher level. And he scored a lot of goals. You've never seen him dig anyone out. You know, I think the only time I saw him get frustrated was Fondop last season against Ebsfleet, where Fondop had a shot outside the area and he could have squared it to him in his first game. Yeah. And he put his hands up and he went, Mike. But then next thing you know, got his head down, won another free kick. And then, he, you know, but he didn't start strutting about. I won't like, he's always running around and moving. But no, would you see him's walking, like walking about and you've just come on. Now he's either sulking that he's been dropped and he's come on for 10 minutes. But again, does he deserve a place in the squad? Fondop scored seven this season now. Do you know what I mean? And Dr and Drummond, he's hungry for it. He started at Warrington Rylands. He went to Macclesfield. He's got a chance. He's played four games for Chesterfield. He wants to put himself on the map. And Mellon again said his attitude, he's always smiling. He wants to learn. And he, you know, again, but that's because he's probably a bit younger, but just, just have a good attitude. You know what I mean? Well, look, it, I mean, the right characters around the club is essential. I mean, Mickey Mellon, you know, has changed his backroom staff quite quite considerably. He's got rid of players who he feels, you know, weren't um, part of the kind of group he wants, for whether that be, you know, on, on playing ability or on, you know, their attitude um, or whatever. We don't know because we don't know what, 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 what daily life's like, but we do know that, there has to be a real harmony in a in a successful team, and arrogant characters. You'll always have them. You'll always have the ones that are, but a bit of attitude. But like you said, Dave, when you're talking about, some, you know, you're talking about the better players in your squad, they they can do it, and players let them get away with it. Managers let them get away with it because they deliver week in week out, and that's you know, it's like, it's like Warnock at QPR. Goals, like Warnock at QPR, he, he he modelled everything around adult adult Arbor. Didn't he? And he was the most worst trainer. He never turned up on time. He turned up 10 minutes before games, but he knew that if he kept him happy and made him feel special, he'd win games from And he did. You know what I mean? And, he, and he, he's come out and said that. He said, I know. And Joey Barton and all these players and Clint Hill hated him, this Tarbert. But Adel Tarap, sorry. And Warnock said, guys, he's going to win us the league. Although he was back because he delivered on the pitch at the moment. You know, I'm not trying to like compare, but no, no, no. You need that. You need that player who's who's head and shoulders above. He's probably paid the most, as Norwood is. And this, I want Norwood to come and score three get three goals in the next game to shut me up. I want him to do yeah. well. I want him to score. I don't of course, to get yeah. Back, but he needs. Yeah, yeah. He need. He need. He needs calling out. His attitude stinks. Stinks. I think right. with, with Norwood, it's. I think sometimes it must be like he's looking at Fondop, who's quite like you said, scored seven, like. You know what you're going to get from Fondop. He's like, I think there was an interview after the Barnet game where Norwood said he's one of the most ridiculous men I've ever met. And like, you, you watch Fondop sometimes and he's like, he might be the greatest footballer I've ever seen. And it's other times it's he's hitting the bar from four yards. It's like, you know what you're going to get from him, but he's 
he's one of them people where he, he will affect the game and he obviously loves playing for us, which is, you can tell with his performances, like yesterday, he's charging the keeper down from a nothing ball back and I have had a lot to say to him, I had a lot to say about him, like, especially after altering him when he missed that one-on-one and I, you know, I've slated him, and I, but then he's you know, completely shut me up by <laughs> just going, right, well, I'm going to score nearly every game now and it's like, all right, mate, calm down, come on. <laughs> It's but like scores, you had, if you could put your mortgage all the on term. it, <laughs> you put your mortgage on it at a one-on-one situation in a player final. You want Norwood over Fondop? Oh yeah, yeah any yeah. day of the week, any yeah. day of the week because he'll finish it. Because Fondop, when he thinks, fuck, <laughs> fucks it up, doesn't he? He does, and that's it. Yeah. When it's I, instinctive, he'll just score. You know what I mean? The thing is with Fondop though, the reason that he keeps getting goals and the reason why he he, he keeps being a fan favourite is because even he's though busy. if if he does that even if he does miss a sitter do you know what he's, he's back in the position he's working hard to get in that position again and he'll keep trying and it doesn't let it, he doesn't let it get to him obviously it you know some of the chances that he's missed earlier on this season will have hurt him but it doesn't let it affect his game he's just, he just goes right okay I missed I'm going to go and work hard again I'm going to get the ball back. I'm going to try and get myself into another position. And there's been games this season where he's done it more than once in the game where he's missed chances, but he keeps going. He keeps trying and he keeps getting himself in those positions. And his hard work, he pays off then. He gets rewarded for it. And that's all you want. That's all you want from your players. You good want attitude. that kind of attitude. Of good just like, attitude, yeah. Yeah, if, I, if it, you know, if at first I don't succeed, I'll, I'll try and try again. And, 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 Look, the fans love him, and rightly so, because you know, and because he's delivering, he's scoring, he's scoring goals, and you know, you look at that front line now, and it's like, well, if I take Fondop off, who do I put in his place? Because who's going to do what Fondop does over yeah. the ninety minutes? See, because we've no one like him, and he's an handful, and he and he and he and he and he wears defenders down, and he and he. You know, and he, he he does he does a job, and and he's he's you know up, up in the f- the forward line now. He's he's the first name on the team sheet. Uh, if we if Fond up the stayed fit when we're in the in the league two under Shares, oh. we would have stayed up hundred percent. There's no two ways about it. For me, he's like an excited child when the ball goes in the box. He just throws himself at the ball and <laughs> and goes in. Sometimes it's you know breaking the window of someone's house, but you know he's he's one of them people where. I don't think I've ever seen that man not smiling. I and mean, it's like, honestly, he's, he's, yeah. he's one of the frustrating players we've ever had, but also at the same time, he'll go and score next week and you forgot about it and you love him again. So it's like, if he had that, if he had them one-on-ones in, he'd, you know, far and away, he'd have about 10 goals this season, if not more. And, I hope, yeah. yeah, I hope he does a really good season. I hope he gets loads of goals this season, has a really, really good season. Um, and because he deserves it. God's number nine scores all the time. He is divine. He's God's number nine. Dave, do you fancy some GN9 merch? Yes, please. Go to the shop on our website, weareoldham.co.uk. God's number nine scores all the time. He is divine. He's God's number nine. We've got t-shirts, mm. we've got mugs, Ooh. it's God's number nine, God's number nine. You know, the, looking around the team, I said it again to my brother yesterday, I said it's nice having players that I like yeah. in, in the squad, Play, players that I respect and that I admire, players who I like um, on their performances. You said about Orgel being your favourite player earlier on at the minute. I, I think he's great. Um, Manny Month, I, I I love him. Did you notice? That, <laughs> I don't I don't want no, no, I'm not, I don't want to mention the size of the linesman yesterday. But did you see the size of the linesman yesterday? He was only tiny on our side, and Manny Month stood next to him. And honestly, it was just unbelievable the size difference. He was an absolute. He's an absolute giant. This the the linesman was was, was shorter than the corner flag though. To be fair, so but it, it just made it just on that. Honestly, it was he was dead, he was dead short. And I know it's not it's not an issue or whatever, but. Manny Mount is a Manny Mountain. He's absolutely yeah. ginormous, but he just brushes defense. He brushes attackers off at, uh, at will with his arm and just brushes them away. You know, Raglan has been immense this season. He's been brilliant as well. Um, it's just, it's so nice to have players now where we're like, these guys are really good players at this level. Um, Sutton, Sutton as well. He just came in. And yeah, and he came in. He played really and well. He's, he's yeah. got energy. He's young. He's. 
he, he was st- sticking his foot in. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he were, you know, it could be could have been quite daunting that yesterday. Could but yeah. he's he, now we're we're looking we're looking now around the team and we're sort of like you know we've been a bit critical of certain you know maybe certain positions or a little bit kind of there's maybe a bit of work to do in this position but you look around the team you go from from Orgel, Sutton, Raglan, Month, um, Kitchen you're happy with that Fondop yeah happy you know and then you're looking about Lundstrom coming on leaps and bounds there's only there's only a couple of positions now like maybe who's the strike partner for Fondop <laughs> and what's the best combination in midfield the rest of the team, you're saying, yeah, this is good. We're happy with this. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's come on a lot. We weren't we weren't talking like this last season about about the team and, and having confidence in it, were we? No, the only concern is the susceptibility at set pieces. That yeah. that where Hudson should have come out for that for that header. He, he he sort of was stuck on his line. I think he has to start claiming some crosses a bit more because he's he's. A, I think after that Halifax away, where he sort of came out and missed it. He's he's got that in the back of his mind a little bit. I think that's worrying him, and I think that's give, he's been a lot more hesitant coming out claiming the ball, whereas before he was quite confident with that. So that's my only concern with Hudson. But you know, shot stopping, he's done all right. You know, um, look, I don't. I think the thing is, is let's not expect perfection from this no, squad no. or this team or anything like. They're going to make mistakes. You know, they're going to lose games. Um. You know, they're going to have off days, but so far this season, we've lost two games. You know, what have we got? What is that now? 14th game of the season, 15th game of the season, something like that, altogether. Um, yesterday, and you know, we yesterday in the cup after after a disappointing home defeat to Solihull, we 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 did the job. What do you make of the of the um attendance? There was about two and a half thousand Latics fans there, about 700 Halifax fans. Do you think that's a decent turnout for this round in the FA Cup, or is it a bit poor? What, what do you think, Bailey? What I expected. Yeah, I, I didn't. I think it's because of the the sort of game it is. I think you know, Halifax. They don't get massive my way crowds anyway. There's going to be a few because they know they've got to come back here anyway in the league. I mean, Oldham fans, I knew we weren't going to have the five k we usually have because seasons get old. You've got to pay them. And all that, and you know, I don't. I think the match day prices sometimes don't. I think, you know, for what for the, the game it is, I think we got more well round out what I expected rather than, you know, the national league cup the other night where there was about ten people there. It's, you know, I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing a little bit. There was more than that, but it's it's more of an appealing game than the national league cup. Put it that way. I think as I think as far as the actual attendance goes, that was probably the one of the best games we could have got apart from Rochdale. Yeah. Um, because like they actually brought seven hundred fans, which is, you know, we could have got, you know, like Hen you know, we not Hendon because we got southern teams, but we could have got, you know, a, a really small team that would yeah. have brought a handful of fans. So, you know, it was it was a good draw in that respect. And and now we've made it through to the first round. Dave, would you prefer that we got like um, some non-league, you know, lower lower league team at home, or would you like us to get like a nice tasty Stockport away or Wigan away or no. something like that? Biggles word at home, some of that, just some crap, just to get to the second round, and then we can hopefully get a nice away day that like Bolton away or Bolton at home. That'd be nice, but don't want Bradford. I don't want Doncaster. Do you of know course. what I mean? Because they're, the they're the always two that we get. I don't want a Tranmere away yet. I just, I just want a, a, like Mikelova Sports or something like that. Do you know, we struggled saying, against, we struggled so badly against bad teams like that. Or, or yeah, like in the competition Kurt, last we had season, Kurt Willoughby and Dan Ward, didn't we? That were <laughs> ever true. Ever, you know what I mean? So and yeah, I just want a. I just want uh, just a, a nice non-leaguer and then another non-leaguer and then a nice third round. Uh, we'll probably end up getting some, something like Exeter away, won't we? Something like oh, that. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> it's I, something... I, just on, I just want something on the telly, you know, if we get like something like Biggles Word or Geisley, you know what I mean? We could get like a nice TV draw for them, you know, and they get a bit of TV money, hopefully. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Bailey? Oh, we were, we were talking about this yesterday before the game with a few of us, and it was like Huddersfield. I think they're in League One now. 
Oh yeah, Huddersfield. That, yeah, that'd be smart, mm, wouldn't it? Well, you know they're not in the greatest, you know, run of form. And they're in, obviously dropped down a couple of leagues, but I think if you, like Dave was saying, get you know someone who's a bit lower down at home or you know or the TV draw, just win. Get rid of this classic olden thing of losing to people that we'd never heard of. Like last year when we lost to Hendon in the FA Trophy, like that was the most golden thing I've ever seen in my life. And <laughs> I just want us to start doing what other teams seem to do and beat people easily, just push them to the side and get their big draws. I'm, I'm, I'm just because the because the league this season is, you know, so crap in terms of like the size of the teams in it and everything this season. We've got not really any great apart from Rochdale and maybe York. There's not really any sort of great away days, is there? So, Forest you know, Green, Sutton. Oh God, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, so it'd be really nice to, and I don't really mind if it's in the first round or second round, or whatever. But something like, just to rekindle one of those old. Um, Huddersfield's a great shout. I'd love, I'd love to go over there again. That's mint, but. Yeah, we'll have Biggles, to Biggles, Biggles word for the second round. Guysley for the uh, so, so, sorry. Biggles word for the first round. Guysley for the second round, and then <laughs> Chelsea away for the third. Well, I mean, look, I'll take, I'll take it, I'll take it. We'll look, at the end of the day, we 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 have to. Oh, just Newcastle wait. away. Imagine oh, Newcastle it, away. That'd be good. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, we'll probably get fucking gates said, won't we? Next. But imagine though, imagine Dave, if we could, we we did like you know we 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 beat say Huddersfield and Stockport in round one, round two, then got Newcastle away in round three. That'd be even better, Ben. That would be like well, you, you think we're going to win it anyway? You want? Us well, to win, yeah, we. I think I think we can. Still on. I, th I think that I think that. that that the club are on course now for, for a European spot by winning the FA Cup. I think it's uh, <laughs> absolutely... All the Athletic versus Dynamo Minsk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be brill. Um, anyway, speaking of winners and losers, um, Bailey, are you going to play a Latics mind? I'll give it a go, yeah. This is where I lose all my credibility on Twitter when I get, like, zero. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about having credibility on Twitter. I haven't got any neither's Dave. We don't worry about that I've kind of loads. thing, do we, Dave? No, I've shit, got loads. I've got loads. Right, I'm gonna read I'm gonna do my best to read the questions out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell Oldham? <laughs> get it wrong, you know. Um okay, uh, here we go. Good luck. <laughs> Why is there ever been to anything? Who did Latic sell to Glasgow Rangers in the summer of 2019? George Edmondson. Correct. Who to date scored Latic's last FA Cup goal in the first round proper? Um, is it like Conor McElhaney or someone like that? Uh, no, Davis Keeler Dorn at Ipswich in 2021. Okay, Which go. future Latix midfielder scored in a 5 2 win for Peterborough against Latix in September 2010? So is it. Um... Nah, pass. Before Connor McElhaney scored 21 goals in the 2021 season, who was the last Latics player to score 15 or more in all competitions during a season? Is it Jonathan Fort? No, it was Callum Lang in 1819 who got 16. Oh. Newish Grounds. Who scored Latics first goal at the Majeski Stadium Reading? I'll just pick it out like Craig Davis or someone of them. Uh, it was Mark Allett. Okay. Latics went 2 0 up in a ZDS Cup at Bramwell Lane in December 1990. But what was the final score? 3 2. I, I don't know. No, it was 7 2. <laughs> How many games? Uh, we lost 7 2. How many games did Latics lose in their promotion winning season of 1990 91? Oh, Christ. Uh, Seven. 
Oh, unlucky, it was eight. Debut goal scorers. Who scored on his debut versus Watford in March 1998? Pass. I can't hide. It was Adrian Littlejohn. God. So, how many did you get, Dave? I got about five there. It is, yeah. So you got you got George uh, Osmond, uh, George Edmondson. Oh yeah. God. Um, it, you didn't get Keeler done. Uh, James Weselowski was the um, Peterborough player who went on to score. Who scored? Who went on to play for Latic? Callum Lang, Mark Haller, seven two uh, promotion season. Yeah, every little John. Yeah, so you got one. Yeah, not that. But when you started saying dates and they started with 19, I thought, I'm, oh, I'm done it. I know, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it's way out of your... Unless you've been, like, reading all the textbooks and watching all the old videos and stuff. I think you need to speak to Prendergast and, you know, say, do you want, like, three options? <laughs> 20, 20, post-2000, pre-2000, or pre-90s. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could. Yeah, there could be a there could be a grading system, I suppose. But um, no, it's so. This is just the way it comes out. You, which one did you pass on? You passed on one, didn't you? Uh, it was the the Peterborough one, I think. The James. Was oh, the James was last. Yeah, would you have got that, Dave? Got it. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. When well, you mm, say that, I did. I, I, yeah, I you little say John, that I though. But I mean, there's John, no little John's goal was a two old draw. Mark Allett scored in the ninety first minute. So and I got the Mark Allett one because. Uh, I uh, I think I went to that game away at Reading. He scored a little tapping, and John McIntyre scored for Reading from memory. And and, and Mark Allett will always be uh, fondly remembered by me for that song. He used to be shy, but now he's all right. <laughs> I really was really. I funny. like as a striker when we had no strikers and Richie was manager. He, he was. I remember Berry at home. Colin Cram scored for them, and he scored in like the eighty seventh minute, and he just he. It, and Stuart Tom broke his shoulder in that game because Gary Kelly cleaned him out for Colin Graham to score. Yeah, it was Alec was a good strike. Was it against Ali? Was it against Huddersfield when he scored that absolute screamer? Is yeah. that, that yeah. a proper that, that's rocket. when he played central, central midfield then because he, yeah. he was a striker. Then he went to central midfield and then Chesterfield signed him. And then Wellings left Oldham and we signed Mark Allett back uh, as a replacement, which didn't work out that well, did it? Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Bailey, you got one, so well done for getting one because it's better than getting none. That is, that's true, and they're only easy if you know them, correct? So, you know, um, so fair play. So, how are you feeling now, Bailey? Are you going to go back to sleep after this? Um, no, I've um, I coach a football team, we've got a game in about two hours, so I'll go to that. Oh, or to be young, Dave. What, what team's that, Bailey? Um, Berry Women's Development Squad. Oh, good, stuff. nice one stuff so uh you might not have the knowledge of uh you know who scored for latix back in 19 whatever but you know presumably you've got a good eye for the game uh how long have you been doing that for um i've just started at berry but i've been a full-time coach for about a year so oh, nice one great stuff that's good all right keep us posted um, how you get on the latix women's team's first home game is at chapel road at two o'clock today so it's free entry so if anyone wants to Get Dave, down. People will be listening to this <laughs> after the game has been played. Oh, for the next one then. <laughs> <laughs> classic Bradley. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck to the uh, to the women's team um, yesterday. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I think we're done. I think we're done, lads. We made it. We got through an hour. Yeah. Oh, don't forget the phone in this Wednesday, half past eight. We have got Sir Andrew of Littleshire uh, <laughs> coming on yeah. the show. So get some questions in. So yeah. probably one of the best penalty takers Latics has ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you remember Andy Little, Bailey? No. no. Oh my God. You are <laughs> young. <aren't> you? <laughs> It'll slaughter me for not knowing some own questions, but. Well, um, That's what, listen, it's the taking part that counts. We appreciate your time, mate. Thanks for joining us after your heavy night. Thanks, John. Really enjoyed nice it. One. No, thanks a lot, mate. It's been really good to have you on. Uh, Dave, thanks for uh, filling in for Sir Andy, Andrew of Halliwell. Uh, the socialite uh, millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you on Wednesday for morning. Cheers. Talk to much. 
sexy merch. It's hot new merch. It's sexy, sexy, sexy merch. Visit weareoldham.co.uk forward slash shop now to see our brand new range of hot, hot, sexy merch. It's hot new merch. Sexy merch. It's hot new merch. It's sexy, sexy, sexy merch. <laughs>